Welcome to the show, Ronald Matuire. You are a rhythm and blues artist based in Maui, originally from Oakland, California. Moved to Maui in 1983 and you became part of a vibrant community of m- musicians. And the R.E. Matuire Blues Rock and Soul Review was born at that time. Your vision is to have musicians that brought special talents and write and choose songs that, uh, that would showcase these, these talents in that band. The blues rock and soul experiment still continues to this day apart from anything else you are very much an old friend of Skylar's and I'm sure we'll, we'll hear a little bit more about that uh, from you it's fantastic to have you with us Ronald on the show here thank you so much for joining us and please do tell us more thank you good morning how are you blessed brother how you doing I'm doing wonderful so yeah that blues rock and soul review I I'm like a small kind John Mayall and the blues breakers except for I look for guys they can teach me Okay. Most of the guys I've had in the band, I consider better musicians than me. So by the time they leave, I've learned something from them. That's right. Right. It's helped me immensely approaching music. Even as old as I am, there's always still something to learn from somebody. That's right. And uh, so that's been wonderful. And, it, you know, music here allowed me to do a lot more things than I was able to do in Oakland, really. You know, right. Oakland, I was playing and I was playing good gigs, but not making any money. I right. played in one of your old bands, Skylar. I think I was there before you with your cousin, Daryl Finney in, in Hot Ice. Yeah, I was the first singer in Hot Ice. <laughs> <I was, laughs> then I was there after you. Yeah, I, I was there. I was 13 years old. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, man. And we was playing all the naval bases and all that kind of stuff, man. It was just like, it, it was crazy. But anyway, uh, and Delhart just died a couple of years ago, I believe it is. I saw that. Yeah, man. But that, I, I love when I saw Hot, hot Ice. What? You know, there's not that many people. <laughs> you know, that wasn't a household name. Uh, but we were big <laughs> in the area for a while. No, man, it's wonderful. You, you know, there was a record. What's that? Wait a minute. It's called. Where we met? Yeah. Groove 2 Music. That was my store in the Lahaina Cannery Mall. And I walked That's- in, saw his brother over. I was like, man, what's what you doing over here, man? He goes, he, goes, he, said, <laughs> he said, I'm from Oakland. I said, I'm from Oakland. Right? And uh, and it, it turned out, what was it? Your your uncle lived around the corner from me on Sequoia Road? Oh, it's my uncle, uncle Arif. He I lived was- at the bottom of the hill right there. Yep. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's crazy, brother. Now, so yeah, we we definitely had that immediate connection and, and that record score. I met a lot of people in that record store because hmm. you know all of everyone the comes here on vacation and they'd wander in there, and in, if there was no one in the store, they would chat like they were at home. So th- it it was a good time. Uh, George Benson used to come in there all the time. He lived in a uh, Conapoli up the street. Okay. And the first time he came in, I didn't know what a wealth of information he was. Okay. And he came in and he looked around. He was decked out in his suit and tie. And and uh, I wow. asked if we could take a picture. Yeah, yeah. George Benson, where he's wearing his suit and tie. He oh, was like always that. clean, always yeah. clean. Yeah. I said, man, can we take a picture? And he said, just a minute. Straighten this stuff up. <laughs> and went okay, <laughs> wow. and then we started talking about music. And as time went on, as people would come to visit him, he would bring them in the store and say, "I want you to meet my friend Ron. He knows a lot about music. Buy something from him." Wow! <laughs> oh wow! Well, that's an endorsement. And, if ever you had one, isn't it? Yeah, and, and then I found out, you know that. You know, I, I, there was a guitar that I liked that the guitar player in Smokey Robinson and the Miracles played. He had that white Gibson. Oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, I was there when he bought that guitar. And he told me the whole story. Oh, wow. About that guitar. Yeah. It's just stuff like that. You just, all you had to do is get him going. Yeah. And uh, that store was a wonderful time. Also, it enabled me to do some of those other things that are on your sheet there because i also met he was the head of the maui jazz society okay. so music lover and and like to go have a cocktail for lunch at the bar across from the store 
they were always trying to get me to oh, just close the store and come on over and have lunch with us. I couldn't do it. So he would hang out and we would talk music because he was a music lover. Right. And he slowly started to pull me into things actively in the community there in Lahaina and introducing me to people. And then one day he comes to me and he's like, Ron, I had connections with all the local artists, no matter how big they were, because I sold a lot of CDs in that store. So their record companies would send them there to perform if I wanted them to come to promote whatever it was they were doing. Wow. Free music. Didn't care who they were. And uh, he's like, we got to do this event for Lahaina. Let's call it I Love Lahaina. So we got together. He knew some artists, some jazz artists from Honolulu that he brought over. And I was able to get some local artists. And behind this was we wanted to raise money for the West Maui schools. We made them participate. We went to the mall, got the mall to cop up 25 grand just as money so we can guarantee schools some money yeah we had these artists come in the schools had to participate in some kind of way and um the first one went really well i think we raised about 25 or so thousand the first time would you hold the concert at at the lahaina cannery mall we had a stage there sound system it and the schools set up all over the mall and we packed it in there all the merchants were happy, obviously, but the schools were happy because they got a check when it was over. And then we did it again, and some bigger local artists had heard about it, and they were like, oh, well, we want to participate. Right, right. That's what happens. I, yeah. So I want to say we raised between three and $400,000 in maybe three years for the schools there. And it was just, just an idea, right, at first. Just an idea. And my buddy that ran the coffee store, Bill, had some harebrained ideas sometimes, but (laughs) he was always willing to push the envelope. He was like, we can do this. And I'd go, eh. And he'd go, no, we can do this. And then again, we put together another event called the Front Street Jazz and Blues Walk. Again, the schools benefited for their music programs. It was specifically for music programs this time. Um, But also the merchants along Front Street, because we would do it after Easter during our slow season. Lahaina, when I moved here, was vibrant music scene. There was live music all up and down Lahaina until two in the morning. And then they would come to when I first moved here. I played from 1130 to 430 in the morning up at the Royal Lahaina in a cabaret there. Well, yeah. And so everyone, music went. From 7 until 4.30 in the morning on the Lahaina side. I, you know, I'd play at this place and guys would come up from somewhere else. And if you were on Front Street, musicians constantly rotated. And then you got, then you got, you, you had uh, Willie Nelson's club around the corner. His he, restaurant. Yeah, we, he you didn't own it? that, but everyone thought he did. That was Charlie's. He used to play there all the time. Him and the owner were friends. I, I met Willie in there, and he was with John Denver. No doubt. Anyway, let's get back to, are you doing any writing? I sent you a song I just put out. Yeah. Purgatory, call it an emergency. It's out on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, every Amazon. It's on all of them. So it's 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 a good tune. I think it came out well. A uh, piano player, I had to play it. He was in New York. He wrote the book keyboards for dummies you know the dummy series i got you tom with regard to obviously the community of musicians that you work with and and that you bring into to what you do do they tend to find you or do you go out and actively locate these guys how does it come about that they join your group and kind of work with you most of them i knew but didn't think they would be interested because they were just better musicians than me a lot of them were jazz players so I had no idea that they wanted to play blues. Hmm. First one that I actually stumbled upon by accident, the first gig we did, the keyboard player calls me and said, I can't make it. Uh-oh. It, exactly. So uh, my bass player, Tim Hackbarth, who's from Oakland too, by the way. Wow. <laughs> there. Uh, he's been here longer than me, but he he said, and he's a blues guy. Uh, whenever, you know, Charlie Bustle White, uh, Elvin Bishop, any of those guys come to town, 
Tim was their guy to play bass. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so he's got a good foundation in, in what I wanted to do. We had played before, but it, it just didn't pop bands. So he tells me, he goes, well, you know, I can get my buddy Bob Jones to come and play guitar. Bob Jones played with Mike Bloomfield. He had years of blues. Mm-hmm. And in that short time with him, yeah. that was an amazing lesson. It's, you know, now I'm playing with this guy who, who lived it and he really lived it. I picked up so much just listening to him play and being able to stand right next to him and look at what he's doing. I'm like, oh man. And then I picked up another Bay Area guy. What? Who had been here. That's right, man. I'm telling you. And his name was Fulton Tashami. He played with a, a, a lot of bands. Um, he's on Rock Steady. He, he plays the piano oh, one. Uh, the Whispers. Whispers. That piano is Fulton on there. Okay. He was an amazing. He, he sang, played keyboards, um, sang like Ray Charles. Damn, how many people from Oakland over there now? That's crazy. Did you know Rock Hendricks? He was a sax player from the East Bay, played with Cold Blood and a lot, a lot of other bands. And uh, he's here, too. I love Kelly Covington's story. Tom, she's from New York, right? Okay. And she went She went to Maui and did a couple of gigs. And she says, I ain't going home. She called home and said, y'all can have all my shit. I ain't going home. Ain't going. <laughs> I'm just not leaving again. She's been there like uh, 30 or something, some odd years. She said, I only At go home. At least 30, because I've been here 40. Yeah. Right. And I've known Kelly for most of those years. Yeah. You know, I do a soul pop dance thing on Sundays and I've had the gig for 10 years and it's packed every Sunday. People like to just come out and dance on a Sunday wow. evening. Kelly was singing in that band for a while, the one that I do Sundays with. She would sing and then I'd have to sing a song after her. Oh, I'd be like, <laughs> why? Why do I put myself in this position? Why? I do not want to follow her because sometimes she is so good. Mm-hmm. I catch myself being a spectator. You know, I'm playing and I'm like, did she just do that? Yeah, man. I, I the first time I met, first I read, I met Ron Kualau. I was playing at the uh, Grand Wailea over there. Still running to Ron every now and then. Yeah. And, and then, uh, but we playing basketball together right there in, in, in Kihei. They, you know, a little, uh, yeah, well, park. And then he go, he goes, uh, what are you doing here? I said, I play, I'm playing music, man. I'm doing a, a show for Steve Jobs for 12 days, and I'm staying at the, you know, the, the White Land. He goes, man, I, I play music too, right? And yep. he's the one, he's the one that introduced me to Kelly and Eric Gilliam. Hmm. <laughs> Eric's still doing well as well. Well, both yeah. Eric and uh, and Ron, we've had on the show as well, haven't we, Skyler? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, yeah. Ron Kualau has been on the show. You know? Nice, and Eric. No, no, I, I, I'm bringing the family on, yeah. man. Come on now, <laughs> that's beautiful, man. L- listen, Ron, I love you, brother. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Appreciate you joining. Uh, us. Pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, Tom's gonna get all your information so we can spread yeah. the love. All right. I right. just want to just want to know, uh, Ron, if um, you can tell us if you're on any kind of social media or anything like that, that people can go and see what you do. Have you publicized anything online at all? Facebook, I'm on there with okay. um, it's Facebook Re McGuire Blues Rock and Soul Review. Okay. And Instagram, Twitter, you can find me on on all, any of those. Okay, cool. What I'll do is I'll get those links and I'll put them in the description of the video as well, and get them to play that single too, so I can. So I can get some hits on there. We gonna spread the love, man. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking. Purgatory, call it an emergency. Oh. Available on all streaming platforms. Peace, aloha, aloha.
Thank you so much for watching. To stay up to date, please click subscribe and hit the bell. You can also join our group on Facebook and find us on LinkedIn and Instagram.